This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Summer 70, 73 Carryover League. Uh, we are continuing in the third and final round of the postseason tournament, moving over into the American League. <laughs> the uh, crazy, kooky, weird American League where the best teams are getting knocked out and the also-rans are running well, as it would turn out. A battle today between Milwaukee and Toronto. Let's see what the needs are before we play this game for this possible three-game series. So we're in the three-game eliminations, the third round, and we start with Toronto, a gamer of 500, Milwaukee, three. So it is, a best of three would give Toronto, you would think, the tiebreaker, but Milwaukee and Toronto faced in the regular season, and Milwaukee handled them three games to one, so a game four is needed. Toronto would have to be winners of three of the four games. Now, we had seen Toronto, uh, this remarkable team, um, they just finished off the California Angels, last year's Cinderella, but today, it's they have another Cinderella to deal with. This year's other Cinderella, the Milwaukee Brewers. Lots of Cinderellas, the sisters, are, are, are hanging out. Here's game one. Opening up in Milwaukee. Toronto's Paul Splitorf versus Milwaukee's Jim Colburn. And the Blue Jays get a run on the first on a sack fly. And it's that kooky third baseman, Jim Brazil, an extra player card that these expansion teams have to rely on, even though they're usually only good once, so they have them once for four years, and then they have to move on, mostly because they're outliers. But Brazil's card of 72 is banging home runs, a solo shot in the fourth and in the sixth, four runs for the Blue Jays. Meanwhile, not just a quality start, another Quality start, and this time, complete game for Paul Splitorf. Uh, gives up six hits and a run, three walks and three strikeouts, as Toronto wins game one, four to one. The solution we believe in beating the Blue Jays is to knock one of their starters out, because they only have a three-man bullpen, and none of their pitchers can pitch on three days rest. The problem is that Doyle Alexander, Paul Splitorf, Bill Zepp, Tom Phoebus, and Ron Klimkowski don't get knocked out before the sixth or seventh inning. They keep giving you quality start after quality start after quality start. In a year where the Mike Quayers getting are, are getting knocked out in the fourth inning and the uh, Mickey Loliches are getting knocked out in the fourth inning and so forth and so on. So it is really bizarre that this pitching staff of Toronto is held up. And by winning game one, now it creates a simple best of three for the remainder of the series. Game two will continue into Milwaukee as a team will host a potential elimination game and game number two is not an elimination game. So in Milwaukee in game two, it is Bill Zepp for the Blue Jays, it is Mike Torres for the Brewers. And finally, suddenly, start startlingly, it happens. It is the Milwaukee Brewers who bash a Toronto starter early. But. They bat around in the third and bat around in the fourth. If you exceed batting around by one batter, you're out of the game this early. But he barely, Bill Zepp barely survives pitching on medical leave <laughs> by throwing the four innings and then continuing into a fifth. His line, five innings, eight hits, eight walks, ten runs, but seven were earned. And in theory, it is because this could be Bill Zepp's final start of the year anyway, as the Blue Jays are now facing elimination. But what it does, by him surviving into the fifth inning, 
It meant the bullpen only pitched single innings. Ellsworth, Hennigan, and Grisenda. So it keeps your bullpen fresh on a short pitching staff, which is what Toronto needed to do. In a 10-1 loss to the, Milwaukee, the potent Milwaukee Brewers. I should mention that the Brewers actually had some nice contributions today. We had a, uh, a Daryl Porter three-run triple in this game. We had a George Scott. Uh, he had a nice uh, three RBI in the game. And um, yeah, it was a nice day all around for uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. So the two games are split in Milwaukee. And so now the third game will be in Toronto. They have to win that or they're done. And the fourth game will be back in Milwaukee for an ultimate game. And so here we are in Toronto. It's going to be Bill Parsons. We saw him pitch brilliantly in the Detroit series against Ron Klimkowski. We've seen him on here once this year, pitching very well against Baltimore. He's actually the a fourth member of the bullpen, but because Toronto's series they've been playing have gone extra games, he is forced into a start today, which means he cannot relief anymore after this game in this series. So Parsons, Klimkowski from Toronto, Cinderella versus Cinderella. Uh, <laughs> uh, the teams are comfortable with their batting lineups, their choices they have to make in their bullpens, most of the time because of limitations. And that's part of the magic of Stratomatic, is that when you can settle in with what you want to do with a team, and you don't have to make a lot of decisions and uh, so forth and so on. And the teams respond by winning uh, fairly well. And these teams, both of them, and we'll look at their stats at the end of the uh, end of this game, regardless, have clearly overachieved. Toronto didn't even exist, and Milwaukee, of course, uh, barely existed. I, I, I'd be kind to say. Let's get started. Here we go. It'll be Steve Hubley leading off for the Brewers. 52 pops to short. JLU, 57 pops to third. Johnny Briggs, 411. Right X. This is Lum, a 2 10 in right field. He makes the grab. Bottom of one. It's Terry Crowley, 65. Pops to short. Mike Lum, 1 8, is a walk. Tommy A.G. acquired from the Mets in the offseason. 4-4, third X. This is McMullen, a 2-E-13. And it's a ground ball C. Runner moves to second base for Milt May. 45, short X. This is Mr. Uh, Fragosi, a 2-E-22. Makes the play. Top of the second, Fragosi, 58. Pops, flies the right field. Don Mincher, 2-4. Flies the center field. And with two outs, it's George Scott. 2-9. He bounces over to shortstop. Bottom of two. Here is Jim Brazil. Let's take a look at this Jim Brazil card. So this is what you have to do with your expansion team. Major League Baseball, of course, there were 24 teams in this era. I have 32. So you have to look at the 20 players on the roster sheets. We're pretty much going to your traditional MLB teams. Those extra players make up your expansion league. Not exactly uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, of course. It's whatever the traditional MLB teams protect. In this case, Brazil, a 1972 Atlanta Brave with 85 at-bats as a pinch hitter, of course would not be protected because Atlanta had so many other hitters. And the Toronto Blue Jays say, we could use this guy. And so Jim Brazil becomes a member of Toronto and they picked him up last year so they have two more years left with him and he is tearing it up this year with double digit home runs and the, and the expansion teams really need this just to compete one seven homer one to four for brazil fly ball the rest and he misses it and flies out and if you're wondering if it seems unfair that these expansion teams get all these cool extra players i might want to remind you that these expansion teams actually don't end up getting the Johnny Benches and the and the Hank Aarons and the Willie Stargills and the Brooks Robinsons of the world. So, yeah, I'd rather have those guys than have an outlier like this who's good once every four years. Frank Fernandez, 2-9, is a K. And Bill Voss, 2-5, bounces short. 
We go to the third. It's Daryl Porter. 111, short. McMullen, 1-8, walk. Dick Schofield, 65, center. And with two outs, it's Steve Hubley. 1-8, triple 1-2, to single is a base hit. Runners on the corners for JLU. 49, bounce to short. Big play here for Foley, a two shortstop, and he makes the play. Bottom of the third, Daryl Cheney, 112, rolls to the pitcher. Tim Foley, 64, pops the second, and with two outs, it's the Crow, Terry Crowley. 35, flies to right field, scoreless in Chile, Toronto. We go to the fourth, it'll be John Briggs, 5'11, short X. Tim Foley at 2E, 44 at shortstop, and that's going to be a cheap single. Jim Fregosi, 412, flies the left. Don Mincher, 67, skies the right, and with two outs, it's George Scott. 2-2 two -two hit by the pitch. Here's a big moment here for the Brewers. Two on, two outs, and it's the young Daryl Porter. 57 off of Klimkowski, second X. This is Cheney, he's a three at second base, and he makes the play. Ron Klimkowski on his way to yet another quality start for our Toronto pitching staff after the debacle in game two. Mike Lum, 1-3, rolls a second. Tommy A.G., 5-9, he skies in the center field. Milt May, 1-6, he strikes out. We'll go to the fifth, fast-moving game. Kevin McMullen, 65, center. Dick Schofield, 48 is a walk. Steve, isn't he Hudley? 46, single one to three on the Klimkowski card. Anna, he hits a three. That's a big break for the Brewers. Third inning in a row with a couple guys on. A chance, really, a big chance to bust through and get these Blue Jays eliminated here in the fifth inning. JLU, 68 pops a second. And for the third inning in a row, can Ron Klimkowski get out of a two on, two out mess? The pitch to Johnny Briggs. One, six, let's take a look at Johnny Briggs' card. Was with the Phillies in 71. He's with the Brewers. 21 homers, 375 at-bats and 71 walks. A 264 batting average. Excellent year. Probably his best year in this timeline. One, six, homer, one, two, 14. He rolls a two. That is a three-run homer. And suddenly, the Blue Jays are reeling. Now they are 15 outs away from their season ending. Jim Fregosi, 35 single to one line out. Well, you have to remember, folks, the Blue Jays have had quality starts uh, against the Baltimore Orioles, Boston Red Sox, and New York Yankees. So they've been through this storm before, and they've held up, and they've rallied from 7 0 deficits and things like that. So can this. Toronto team continue their magical run here. Down three in the fifth at home. It'll be leading off Jim Brazil. 48, double one to four off Parsons is a single. Frank Fernandez, 68 a walk. Two on for Bill Voss. 69 is a base hit in the right field off of Parsons and here come those Blue Jays. Brazil will hold at third. Bases loaded, nobody out. Milwaukee will play it back with a 3-0 lead for Daryl Cheney. 59, Cheney hits a sack fly to left field, and the Blue Jays are on the board. 3-1. First and second, one out, it's Tim Foley. 34, pops to second base. With two outs now, it'll be Terry Crowley. The pitch to the Crow. 47 off of Parsons is a strikeout, and the Blue Jays can only get pick up one. 3-1 game as we go to the sixth. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Top of the sixth, it'll be Don Mincher. Klimkowski's a starter seven. If he can hold it together here in the sixth, he'll probably pitch through to the seventh. As again, uh, taxing the bullpen even if they win forces a winner-take-all game four. 
Don Mencher, 48 is a walk. George Scott, 43, left X. This is good. They have a good defensive outfield. Their infield's not very good defensively for Toronto, but their outfield is. Bill Voss is a 2 minus 2 E4 in left, and he makes the catch. Daryl Porter, 56, off of Klumkowski, double on a four, single dot dot. Here we go again. Two more base runners. Got to bring the infield up. And I have to really start thinking about maybe going to the bullpen here. Even though uh, they don't have a deep one. And they have four frames to pitch into it. With one more game possibly happening. The runners come up for Ken McMullen. The pitch. 56. They're all over Klimkowski's card today. It's a single to center. That'll plate Mincher. Porter holds a second. Doesn't break him. He's a starter seven. Relief three, starter seven. But the Brewers have clearly found their lumber in the last two games after a game one loss. Dick Schofield with two on and one out. 68 pops to second and with two outs. Steve Hubley, 1-3, bounces a short. Not quite a quality start, but four runs through six frames for Klimkowski. He keeps his team within the three runs. We'll see what we do here in the sixth and determine how we pitch it in the seventh. I mean, Mike Lum, 1-6 is a base hit. Tommy A.G., big moment here for his young Blue Jays. He's the leader of the team, surprisingly in contention for a playoff spot. Never thought he'd be that way with the Toronto team. Let's take a look. Tommy A.G., 1-10. Yes, the New York Mets, unfortunately. <laughs> well, it set up a remarkable offseason. They could not pay this guy enough money because they were paying Tom Seaver, Jerry Kuzman, Jerry Grody, Cleon Jones, all new contracts. One of the guys had to go, and the AG was the guy left out. So instead of him signing with the Braves or the Cincinnati Reds or the Dodgers of the National League, they traded him to an America League team that they thought would be very, very far away from the New York Mets. That would be, uh, yeah. And now the Blue Jays are almost in the postseason in a weak American League. And could Tommy A.G., theoretically, face his New York Mets in the World Series? That would be the bizarro world. Anyway, 110 on his card is a double to center field. Lum will not challenge the arm of Hubley as they're down by three. Second and third, Bill Parsons is a starter seven. Excellent pitcher. We'll stick around here and face Milt May. 211 rolls to second base and a run scores, making it four to two. I think you're going to bring the infield up. You don't want to give up runs this easily on ground balls. So the infield will come up for Jim Brazil with one out. And one nine, Brazil is a single to left field, and that quickly we got a four three game, folks. Brazil's at first with one out. It's Frank Fernandez. One six is a K, and with two outs, it's Bill Voss. 64 of Parsons, pops to short. A 4-3 classic in the making here in Toronto. Top of the seventh inning. Klimkowski is better against righties than lefties. So if he gets J.L. Lou out, let him pitch through for Gosey. Otherwise, we'll go to Dick Ellsworth. So it'll be J.L. Lou leading off in the top of the seventh inning. 69, sky is the center. Johnny Briggs, who damaged the Blue Jays with a three-run homer in the fifth. 2-5 is a base hit. Now you got Fergosi, a righty, and then Mincher. Ellsworth is warming. He's ready to go. But Klimkowski is going to pitch to Fergosi with a runner at first and one out. 56. They found his card again. Single to center field. I think i got to pull him now. Briggs. Will not challenge AG's arm and stay at second. That'll do it. Six and a third for Klimkowski. Gave it everything he had and put multiple men on in five straight innings. And now we need this Toronto bullpen to pull another rabbit out of its hat. As they have been doing it all year. And they'll have Dick Ellsworth come on in in the seventh inning. Dick Ellsworth was a... Was no, he was a Milwaukee Brewer against his former team. I was thinking he was a senator. He was a Brewer in 70 with a 3.81 ERA in 59 innings. He's been excellent this year. All three of the Toronto Blue Jay pitchers, none 
particularly notable, Ellsworth, Phil Hannigan, and Drew Rosenda have all had remarkably good years compared to some of the other bullpens in baseball. Ellsworth will face Don Mincher with two on and one out in the top of the seventh. The pitch to Mincher. 65, he hits the Ellsworth card, triple, one to 12, single dot dot. That is a two run triple and the Brewers are starting to feel it here in Toronto. They have a 6-3 lead. Toronto's pitching staff's finally starting to fail in game two and now in game three. They bring the infield up for George Scott. 68, another base hit and that'll make it 7-3 and things are not looking good for our Canadian neighbors here. We have a runner at first, one out, it's Daryl Porter. He'll stay in the game as he's a better defensive catcher than Jerry McNertney. 57 is a second X. This is Cheney, a three at short at second base, E41. And it's a single dot. Disaster is looming here. Two on, one out for Ken McMullen. One four. And that's a six four three double play, and that'll save the Blue Jays. But it's 7-3 to three with nine outs to get for Bill Parsons and the Brewers. Stretch time here in Toronto. We have been listening to Canada's favorite sons. Well, they may not be, but I'll make it up as they are. The Guess Who? Canadian band. I think they were from Manitoba. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. The Guess Who's 69 LP. No time. Laughing. Undone. Great little record here from future members of BTO. Yeah. Okay. Bottom of the seventh. Bill Parsons on the hill. Can he finish this off? He's got Ken Sanders, one of the best closers in the, in the American League. Uh, getting to Sanders could be tricky. Earl Stevenson, John Gellner, damn again. But we'll see. Parsons is a starter seven, so you got to break him to get him out of there. Daryl Cheney. 312 lines the second. Tim Foley, 1 3, flies to right, and with two outs, it's Terry Crowley. 1 7 is a walk, and with two outs, it's Mike Lum. 2 7 is a strikeout. It is 7 to 3 in the eighth inning here. And Ellsworth continues into the eighth. And they will go to Ron Theobald, batting for Dick Schofield here. Ron Theobald is the pinch hitter. 68, another hit off of Ellsworth, and the Blue Jays just cannot find, figure out this Brewer hitting attack here. Top of the lineup, Hubley's left-handed, so Ellsworth will pitch to him, then I'll turn it over to Hennigan. Steve Hubley. 54 pops the third, and that will do it. So he goes an inning, was not very sharp at all. Now I'll turn it over to Hennigan, hoping for something better to happen. Phil Hennigan will come on in the eighth. JLE gives up homers, but he doesn't necessarily put a lot of runners on beyond that. And JLE does not have power. He most likely pitched to Lou and Briggs. Maybe not for Gosi. But anyway, in the eighth. Phil Hennigan to Jay Alou, the runner at first and one out. Here's the pitch. 58, short X. This is the rangy Tim Foley at short. Uh, and that'll be a double play. Another break. Inning, inning, double plays for the Brewers in the seventh and eighth innings. Could have made a lot more, could have done a lot more damage in this game. If the Brewers lose this, it's on their own. They stranded one, two, they put four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17 runners on base and have a 7-3 lead. They're relying on Bill Parsons, the strong arm of Bill Parsons. We can use Ken Sanders for two innings in a closeout game if needed. But Bill Parsons will continue and we will face Tommy A.G. leading off in the bottom of the eighth. 66 bounces to short. This is Fergosi, a 2-E-22 shortstop, makes the play. Long spot. There we go. Milt May. 38 is a base hit for Milt. Jim Brazil saw his card earlier, and he is two for three today. 47 off Parsons is a strikeout. And with two outs, it's Frank Fernandez. Let's take a look at this Fernandez card. 
1970 card, the last year we'll use it. Fun card was an Oakland A. 15 homers and 252 at-bats with plenty of walks and on base. Uh, would have been a perfect Oakland A on, on these the Toronto Blue Jays and really enjoy them. So here's the pitch to Frank Fernandez. 39 is a base hit in the left field. Two on, two outs. We are about to break Bill Parsons. He will pitch to Bill Voss, and if he gets on, we're going to turn it over to Sanders. Bill Voss, let's take a look at this guy's card. Again, good, great defensive corner outfielder here. He also was a Milwaukee Brewer. So you have former Brewers playing for Toronto today. I think Voss also played for the California Angels. In 71, he had 10 homers and 275 at-bats, which is nice, and 251 batting average. And a 3-5 would come in pretty handy right now for the Blue Jays. The pitch to Bill Voss. 55 off Parsons is a roller to second base. Bill Parsons is the story today. Three runs for eight innings. And he has the Brewers an inning away from going to the playoffs. The perennial last place team in the American League Midwest who blew out the Detroit Tigers. And they also knocked out a playoff team of a year ago, the Kansas City Royals. They are on a tear, folks. They have won say four to one they, they won eight out of nine coming into this series they've won nine out of eleven they're, tr they're trying to win ten out of twelve games my goodness folks ninth inning that'll do it for Hennigan we'll go to Toronto's closer to try and eliminate any more damage Joe Grisenda comes on in the ninth and batting for Johnny Briggs will be Rick Reichert for the Brewers. Rick Reichert leading off as a pinch hitter in the ninth from Milwaukee. 1-4, flies to left. Jim Fragosi, 67, is a K. And with two outs, it's Don Mincher, 59, rolls to second base. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and there's no discussion here, folks. Parsons will gladly sit in a dugout and relax, because we have, Milwaukee does, finally, they have great use of Ken Sanders, arguably the best closer in the American League. He was 5-2 and two with a buck 76 ERA in 1970, and he actually is pitching in meaningful games. And it's always great to see that. Ken Tatum, an angel closer, was in a similar situation a year ago. But here is Ken Sanders with a four-run lead and three outs to get. And he'll face the bottom of the Toronto lineup. It'll be Daryl Cheney. 39, rolls to first. Tim Foley, 1-7 is a K. And with two outs, Toronto season comes down to Terry Crowley. 1-8 is a ball four. He walks. Mike Lum will bat here. 65. Skies it into center field. And that is the end of the Blue Jays season. Milwaukee lost game one and then rolled in games two and three to eliminate the Toronto Blue Jays. Your Milwaukee Brewers. Last place team with the Seattle Pilots and the Brewers in 70 and for a nice chunk of time in the early 70s. They're going to the wild card round in the playoffs, knocking off a surprising Toronto team, which, you know, give them credit. Toronto did knock out the Yankees, and uh, Baltimore was knocked out by Texas. And so the American League East is done outside of the Red Sox. They're the only American League East team left in our league at this time. Milwaukee. Congratulations, Brewers. Really fell under the radar. They got a really nice, intriguing offense and Ken Sanders at the back of the bullpen. A walk and a K for Ken. Bill Parsons, the number two starter behind Jim Colburn, had an excellent game. Seven hits, three runs. They were earned. He walked three straight out six. Grisendo struck out a guy in the ninth. Hennigan came on and got a double play ball in the eighth. Ellsworth gave up a hit in the eighth, but also he could not get Don Mincher out, give up three hits and a run in the seventh. As Klimkowski does take the loss, giving up eight hits and six runs. They were all earned. 
and uh, first the first time we have not seen a quali good quality start by a Toronto pitcher in an important game, nor good bullpen work there. 1019 0109 71237 71237 41 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. So with Toronto losing, it's a near miss for them. They pretty much did exactly what they needed to do. They executed what they needed to execute to almost go to the playoffs, and they were a game away from doing it. In the tough American League East, they probably had like a 3% chance of, the, of this happening, and they got dangerously close to doing it. They needed the Yankees to shoot themselves in the foot and the Orioles to crash and burn, and then they had to take care of business themselves against, you know, a weak California Angel team and this weak Brewer team, they couldn't get past the Brewers. Shed no tears for Toronto, folks. Their season is over with a 21 and 21 record. They have also accumulated 1,628 Commissioner Award points, which could give them a draft pick next year because of all of the use of their roster. They are a 247 hitting team with a 370 ERA. They scored 173 runs and they gave up 183 runs. So they're minus 10 in run differential with a 500 record. Alexander was 6 and 2. All their pitchers, starting pitchers, 78, 67, 63, 61 innings, very consistent. And actually, five, none of the starting pitchers could pitch on three days rest, and they still ended up with uh, six complete games, three by Doyle Alexander. Offensively, Jim Brazil on the outskirts of the MVP voting in the American League with 16 homer and 32 RBI, 45 for 167. That's a 269 batting average. Probably won't win the MVP, but he'll get into maybe a top 10 list. Remarkable year, Jim Brazil, 16 homers with that card. Almost doubled the at bats he actually had while tripling the number of homers he had. Milt May was also a monster. He had eight homers as well and 24 RBIs. The leading hitter on this team, Mike Lum, 57 for 173. He was snubbed for the All-Star game. He hit 329. And how about Tommy A.G., the leader of the, of the squad? He had seven stolen bases. No other Blue Jays stole a base. Nine walks, 45 strikeouts. We don't like that. Had 17 doubles, six homers. 48 for 172, 279 year. Battle, sounds like a Tommy A.G. kind of year right there. And for Milwaukee, they are 22 and 18, and they are a wild card team. They may, they can be the number five or number six seed, depending on what happens with the Twins and Rangers. They are hitting 266. They have a 310 ERA, which is remarkable. Ken Sanders, three win, three and one with 12 saves, four earned runs in 24 innings, is a buck 50 ERA. Not a lot of slugging going on. Nobody in double digits and home runs. But George Scott does have 35 RBIs and 55 hits. He was also an All-Star Game snub. He's hitting 346. Bill Parsons, who won that game, is 5-2, having a great year. Steady, uh, the Steady Brewers facing a bunch of collapsing and mistake-prone teams. So when we plug in the postseason result here, Toronto needed a 3-1. They couldn't get it. Milwaukee gets a 2-1. And so Milwaukee is now 22-18. And, and Toronto, over here, is 21 and 21. And Milwaukee at four over 500. The Twins and Rangers are playing in the other series. And uh, the winner of that could be the number five seed or the number six seed as well with Milwaukee. Still more baseball to play in the American League. But that's it today. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations to your Milwaukee Brewers stunning the American League by getting into the playoffs. Thanks for checking us out. We'll see you next time.